Hi, it's Kate and welcome to Marvelous Videos. In today's episode, we look at the top 12 scariest monsters from Crypt TV. Nothing can spice up a horror film more than the presence of a terrifying monster. Hence, we were delighted when an entire monster universe was backed by Bloomhouse Productions in 2015 and Crypt TV came into existence. It's rightfully hailed as the Marvel for Monsters because the thrilling horror shorts come up with some of the most innovative monster designs. Crypt TV is the brainchild of Jack Davis and Eli Roth, and the dynamic duo brought about a creative revolution in the horror genre. The content usually comprises one-off horror shorts or a series consisting of several short episodes. They have created some iconic characters and introduced them to the fans on social media. This interactive medium was a fresh approach that was loved by horror fans and critics alike. Over the years, Crypt TV has brought us some memorable monsters as part of some creepy stories. They have become a fine example of how digital media can be used to put out some quality content, and today they are one of the fastest growing businesses. It might be a cost-effective medium, but that never reflects on the stuff they make. The abundance of exciting monsters in the horror shorts provides for a remarkable monster gallery. These horror shorts are a must-watch if you want to witness an amazing buffet of terrifying and cool monsters. In this video, we bring you some of the scariest monsters that we encountered on Crypt TV. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. <laughs> Luxie from Luxie. Ironically, the Luxie is not a monster you want to see, who is the titular primary antagonist in the Crypt TV series of the same name. There is something essentially dark about the way this monster picks its victims. It preys upon the depressed and dejected, who are unable to move on from their sorrow. The Luxie is a humanoid monster, and he seems to be quite tall and well built. He is dressed in a white dress shirt, black pants, and a dark blue blazer. His strange, sickly orange face is scarred by a few deep cuts, and the only prominent facial feature of this monster is his sharp teeth and the corroded black gums. His face is transfixed in a wide, creepy smile, and the Luxie also has long fingers with clawed fingernails. The choice of victims picked by the Luxie monster is quite interesting. People unable to recover from a tragic incident in their lives are usually the targets. He would first leave a warning note for the victim, and if the victim is unable to recover before his arrival, he would kill them and take away a body part. This body part is usually symbolic of their grief. This powerful monster would only stop at one thing, if the victim did not have any guilt for his terrible actions. We've seen a murderer let off because he had no guilt for what he did. The Luxie is one of the most famous monsters in the Crypt Universe, and this unique creation deserves every bit of the craze. I thought you were- <laughs> The Birch from The Birch what are monsters but traumatic memories of human lives? The Birch is a monster that you will sympathise with because she was a special young woman before being transformed. Her name was Laurie, and she was an orphan girl adopted by a childless couple. She had the ability to control nature, but things took a turn for the worse after her boyfriend forced himself on her and she gave birth to a baby girl. Her adoptive parents were worried about their reputation and they got the infant killed. Laurie was devastated and infuriated by the loss of her baby. She killed her parents and transformed into a dangerous nature demon. The birch stands at around 8 feet, and this humanoid monster is made up of birch wood. The upper part of her head is shaped into a crown of branches, and the vines around her head look like horns. Her skeletal face and lifeless eyes are symbolic of the pain she has gone through. She doesn't have legs, but her long fingers are made of branches. The birch is a protector of the forest and those who seek her help. She only protects those with purity and love in their hearts, and the oppressors and wrongdoers are slaughtered without any mercy. She's a righteous monster, and the poor soul develops an attachment with those who summon her to fill the void left behind by her daughter. Mordio and the Mordio Queen from Mordio the Mordio Queen is the matriarch of the Mordio, and she is the ruler of the forest where they all reside. She has the power of turning people into Mordio, and this adds to the population of her species. The Mordio are a race of demonic creatures who can be spawned when humans resort to any form of cannibalism, in particular in that stretch of forest. 
In season one of this exciting miniseries, we see a couple of hikers stranded in the woods. One of them preys on the other to survive and get back to civilization. However, the corpse of the dead hiker is reanimated, and he reveals that there is a heavy price to pay for resorting to cannibalism. The killer transforms into a strange monster. The flesh from his head tears off and it morphs into a deer skull. There have been instances where Mordio has been summoned by an individual, but it usually didn't end well. The queen has a similar appearance as the other Mordio, with a human body and a deer skull in place of her head. She doesn't have the usual herbivorous flat teeth, and her sharp canines are ideal to rip open victims. She has red skin, which is almost symbolic of all the lives she has taken. Usually, the queen is seen wearing a floor-length black coat with a hood. After someone is transformed into a Mordio, they seem to lose all their past memory, and their personality changes drastically. They are constantly hungry for human flesh, and the event called Blood Hunt involves them coming together to seek out prey. These creatures have incredible speed and strength, and they seem to stop aging after transforming. After watching these humanoid cannibalistic monsters, you'd think twice before venturing into the woods. <coughs> the Thing from The Thing in the Apartment The Thing is the main monster in the horror short title The Thing in the Apartment and its sequel. This humanoid monster hides in the shadows of normal apartment homes and preys upon unsuspecting victims. It seems to take pleasure in slaughtering and consuming the victims, and even though its behaviour is mostly animalistic, it does display some intelligence while stalking the prey. Once it locks in on a target, there is no escaping the jaws of death. This monster is quite tall and lanky, and there is a particular undead appearance that will remind you of zombies. The pale skin seems to be rotting and the wrinkled, deformed face is almost skeletal. The crooked teeth are exposed and the bloodshot eyes of the creature are deep within the face. The sides of the cheeks are slit and this exposes the entire set of teeth, making it look like a permanent creepy smile. The thing is freakishly strong and humans don't stand a chance against the power of this monster. However, it seems vulnerable in light and only thrives in dark places. One particularly disturbing sequence involves the Thing launching a surprise attack on a woman in her apartment. There are some other gruesome scenes involving the Thing, and the sudden attacks will haunt you for days to come. Mimic from Mimic The short film titled Mimic is remarkable for the extreme shock value. The twist in the narrative gets to you and the titular monster is as creepy as they come. It all starts with a father comforting his son in the other room. They all seem to have moved into a new house and his son is scared about sleeping alone. He convinces him to stay in bed and we hear the scared voice of his son pleading. Suddenly, a noise makes the father get out of bed and he is shocked to find his son sleeping peacefully. So who was talking in his voice the whole time? The monster, of course. When he gets back to his room, he watches in horror as a monster is feeding on his wife. It's a large creature with a giant bulbous head and large white eyes. The monster seems to be covered in some kind of a blanket, and the human-like teeth are sharp enough to slice through flesh. The special power of this monster is to mimic voices perfectly, and it can use this ability to lure its victims. It's shown to be quite agile, and it leaps on the father with little effort face hooker style. The last scene is equally haunting, as we see the child being lured by his father's voice. It ends on an ominous note, and no prizes for guessing the next victim of this monster. <coughs> Mira Mira from Mira. Looking into the mirror can have some terrifying consequences. Well, a woman named Sandra has arrived in a hotel room with her boyfriend and she seems to be quite absorbed with herself and her phone. The moment she sits in front of the mirror, her narcissistic self witnesses the hideous mirror demon Mira on the other side. It traps her inside the mirror and takes her place on the outside. It could be a personification of the dark side of Sandra, or it could simply be a demon from an alternate mirror realm. Mira takes a mutilated form of those sitting in front of the mirror, for instance, when she takes the form of Sandra, her hair is messy, her skin is dying, and the clothes are tattered with bloodstains. There are scars all over her face, and the white eyes seem to be entirely vacant. It kills Sandra's boyfriend in a matter of seconds. 
It transforms into its true form as the face opens into a flower-like structure with jaws. It sinks its teeth into the victim's neck and he dies instantly. Sandra watches helplessly inside the mirror, and Mira seems to walk away, leaving Sandra to her fate in the mirror realm. The scariest thing about this monster is that it's possibly a demonic reflection of one's inner self, and thus there is no running away from this one. Kinderfanger from Piper's Song the horror short film Piper's Song brought us Kinderfanger, one of the most disturbing monsters seen in Crypt TV. It's drawn towards children who form a majority of his victims. This child-grabbing monster hypnotizes the kidnapped children with the music that he plays on his flute. They seem to be kept in an alternate reality, hidden from the eyes of the members of the search party. This black mysterious entity arrives in a puff of smoke and it forms a skeletal outline. The face is like an elongated human skull, and the devilish eyes are deep within the sockets. The Kinderfanger doesn't seem to have any skin, and it can disappear from plain sight in seconds. When he appears, his body appears to be covered in a black furry robe, and he's always carrying his black flute. In the short film, he seemed to control the behaviour of the kidnapped children, and turn them into cannibalistic, vicious killers. They slaughtered the search party, and the monster simply had to guide them into this mayhem. The monster seems to take some sadistic pleasure while watching his minions slaughter the people. The protagonist, a little girl who was deaf, seemed to be able to evade his hypnotic influence. However, in the end, she is shown to be cornered by the monster and the kids under his control. <laughs> Fluffy from Troubled Youth we assume that Rottweiler and Pitbull are some of the meanest pets, until we came across the demonic pet monster Fluffy. The horror short brings you this unique monster, and it's straight away in action. We see a young man get dragged away with great force, and his last attempts to grab onto a surface fail. In the classroom, four students are hiding from the monster under the table. They decide to lock themselves inside the closet, but the first three try to keep the fourth girl outside after she drops something that attracts the monster. However, at the last moment, the fourth girl pries the door open, and we are shocked to find that the monster is controlled by her. The fluffy monster behaves like a cuddly pet dog for this girl, but it devours the others effortlessly. It has a deformed, scaly, human-like face with sharp teeth, and two devil-like crooked horns. It walks on all fours, and the creature is covered in black fur. It resembles a wolfman to some extent, and seems to work according to the instructions of this girl. It could be a demonic monster summoned by the girl who is probably worried by her peers. Now she has the best protector imaginable, because no one will want to get on the bad side of someone with such a lethal pet. <laughs> Miss Anity from Miss Anity a humanoid arachnid monster took over the identity of the original Miss Anity. In her human form, Helen Anity was a beautiful Caucasian woman with curled blonde hair and blue eyes. After she is taken over by the monster, she has certain monstrous features in her human appearance. For instance, she has a large mouth equipped with sharp teeth, and six arachnid legs are attached to her body. The pupilless eyes and insect-like mandibles give her a humanoid arachnid look and she now has grey decaying skin too. Her well-kept outfit now changes into tattered clothes. Miss Anity had the personality of a middle-aged woman in the mid-1900s, and her values will be considered to be outdated and oppressive in today's time. She wrote a book on her philosophies, and it was trashed by the modern-day readers. Now, the monstrous Miss Anity forces her views and ideologies on others. Anyone who doesn't conform to her school of thought is abducted or killed and turned into her puppets. She views anything modernised and breaking the stereotypes as a threat, and her victims are the likes of men interested in makeup and stay-at-home dads. The Crypt TV series title Miss Anity brought a satirical presentation of the demons of the past symbolised by the arachnid monster, and it's an intriguing concept that ought to be appreciated. Cakeman from Birthday Wish The sight of the Cakeman monster is the last thing a kid wants on their birthday. 
This demented monster takes pleasure in torturing and tormenting spoiled kids after kidnapping them on their birthdays. A young girl named Libby gets a mysterious gift box on her birthday, and her parents have no idea who it's from. Later that night in her bedroom, she notices the box glowing with the happy birthday song playing inside. She is dragged inside by the Cake Man, and she wakes up in a realm where there are several kids who have been tortured. The Cake Man is shown to be a tall, thin man dressed in a clown outfit. He has a big red ball on his nose, and his sharp, thin teeth almost look mechanical. Instead of fingernails, this monstrous entity has sharp knives, and his hair is replaced by a blob of pink icing with several lit candles on top. He seems to be targeting the kids who are not up to their best behaviour. Libby did behave like a spoiled kid, eating cake and ignoring her parents. He chops off the hands of his victims and has various other methods of torture. This monster is quite capable of travelling between the real world and his dimension, because the short film ends with him peeping his head out of the box to greet Libby's shocked mother. Terror from Water Cycle Terra is an elemental monster who brings justice to those who waste water. It appears to be a transparent female figure made up of water, and she severely punishes any abuse of the environment. Terra is not essentially evil, and we've not seen her prey upon the innocent. She doesn't have a rigid physical form, and although she's entirely made up of water, she can change her form into other elements of nature. In the horror short film titled Terra, she punished a young lady who kept the tap open unnecessarily, without worrying about all the water that she was wasting. However, she didn't harm the kid who was cautious enough to close the tap. Later, she takes the form of flames, after a truck driver threw out a lighted cigarette while driving, and several plants caught fire. Terra is protective of the environment, and she is portrayed as an elemental spirit. She can control water, fire, and other essential elements. She's supremely powerful, and the only damage caused to her is damage to nature in general. This righteous monster provided an entertaining lesson on behaving responsibly towards the environment. <laughs> Telos from Wishmaker This monster is capable of carrying out all wishes of its owner, even the most violent ones. The Telos monster is a humanoid creature with a fleshy body. The face is largely made up of its disorderly sharp teeth, which stand out like pins waiting to pounce on their prey. It has eyes deep within the socket, but no other facial feature is prominent. Stan learns about the side effects of using this monster the hard way. He receives a magical orb which helps him control the Telos monster. His wish comes true after it brings him his desired girl and riches. However, his friend is skeptical of these events, and asks him to control himself. Stan is too arrogant and casually utters the words, bite me. The Wishmaker monster turns his friend into a hideous Telos monster, and it indeed bites his neck and kills him instantly. Uncontrolled wishes are not to be trifled with, and Stan pays a heavy price for his callousness. If we've stirred your interest in these amazing monsters, be sure to check out more of Crypt TV's fascinating content. They have a magical way of dealing with monsters and horror, and every minute spent enjoying their content will be worth it, so stay tuned and keep watching. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks!